Hey guys and welcome back to the channel, it's Sketch Monkey here and today we are having a look at the 1972 Chrysler Imperial Le Baron. And of course we're gonna have a look at the two door because simply put it looks a lot better than the four door. So that's the one we're going to redesign, redesign today and modernize, make it into a model that could possibly be uh, manufactured today. Not gonna worry about any regulatory design uh, issues that we might have. I'm just going to make it look the way I want it to look if it was made today. So if you're looking for a complete redesign, this might be more of a resto mod if you want to call it that. So talking about the Chrysler Imperial Le Baron here from 1972, this is one of my favorite cars from the 70s. It just has such a presence and when when you see these coming down the road it just looks kind of majestic and it has that art deco raymond louis feel to it which i love and that i think has a lot to do with the horizontal graphics that we have in the front here and because there are so many horizontal features in the front that just emphasizes the width of this car even more and i also love that you have a 90 degree stop in each corner that also adds to the width of the car so it looks very very wide and it is a wide car and that's definitely one of the features that i want to keep in the redesign here is to make it look very wide and definitely work on the graphics in the front the graphics of the front headlights and the graphics in the bottom here as well we're going to change that we're pretty much going to change the entire front of this car and we're also going to change the wheels because as you know in the 70s the 60s the wheels kind of sit inside of the car so you have this massive volume or extra overhang if, uh, of the fender that covers the car. So what I want to do is bring this wheel out to this point right here. And that will make it look a lot mo more modern and contemporary with its design. I'm going to keep the overall proportions of the car because to me that is what makes these 70s cars so special. They're, they're kind of land yachts, they're very big and uh, they have big volumes even though they, they are only two doors and could pace. The cool thing is that they decided to make the cars huge. It doesn't matter if it was a two door or a four door and that's definitely something else that I want to keep in this redesign. Update all of these small details like the uh, door handle right there and also this section line between the body of the car and the roof that you see here. I want that gone and I wanted to, to integrate those two pieces into one single smooth transition between those two pieces. Those are the key design features that I want to change or modernize with this LeBaron, Imperial LeBaron. With that said, let's jump into the redesign, let's get to work and let's see how this is going to turn out. Imperial was the Chrysler Corporation's luxury automobile brand from 1955 to 1975 and then again from 1981 to 1983. The Imperial name had been used since 1926 but was never a separate make, just the top of the line Chrysler. However, in 1955, the company decided to spin Imperial off as its own make and division to better compete with its North American rivals, Lincoln and Cadillac. Imperial would see new and modified body styles introduced every two or three years, all with V8 engines and automatic transmissions, as well as technologies that would later filter down to Chrysler Corporation's other models. For the 1955 model year, the Imperial was launched and registered as a separate make, apart from the Chrysler brand. It was a product of the new Imperial division of Chrysler Corporation, meaning the Imperial would be a make and division onto itself and not bear the Chrysler name. Chrysler Corporation sent notices to all state licensing agencies in the then 48 states informing them that the Imperial beginning in 1955 would no longer be registered as a Chrysler but as a separate make. Chrysler introduced the forward look styling by Virgil Exner who would define Imperial's look and the look of cars from other four Chrysler divisions from 1955 to 1963. Even as early as in 1954, Chrysler ads at the time began to visibly and consciously separate the Imperial from the Chrysler Division car line in the eyes of the public to prepare 
for this massive change coming in 1955. Once the Imperial brand was introduced, Cadillac no longer used the Imperial name for its top-level limousines starting in 1955. The fuselage look was how Chrysler described its new styling for 1969. Instead of the square lines of 1964-68 models, the new Imperials featured rounded tumble-home sides, bulging at the belt line and tucked in down to the rocker panels. The new styling not only made the cars look longer and wider, it also surrounded the passengers in a hull-like fashion similar to an aircraft, hence the reference to fuselage. The curved side glass, which had been pioneered in America by Imperial for its 1957 model, had a much tighter radius with this model, while the increased curvature of the body sides permitted the window frames to be moved outboard at their bases, resulting in an increase in shoulder room without an increase in overall body width compared to the previous C body. To reduce development and tooling costs and bring overall expenditures more in line with actual sales, Imperial was forced to share some of its body shell with Chrysler for the first time since 1956, and this meant that the glass and roofs were the same as some of the entry-level Chryslers. Other than that, little had changed. Construction was still unibody and the wheelbase was still stretched 3 inches longer than a Chrysler's in front of the passenger section, the engine and transmissions were the same, and the torsion bar front suspension was still used. The 6.8 liter engine that had been standard since 1959 was replaced in 1966 with a 350 horsepower 7.2 liter engine in 1966, and this is the same engine used in this, the fourth generation Imperial. The chic metal was completely new for the 1972 model, and that's the one we're redesigning here in this video, although the styling was an evolution over the previous fuselage style. The 1972 model appeared bigger and heavier all around in comparison to the 1966-71 models, and featured a somewhat more rounded side profile without a character line down the side and chrome trim on the top seams of the fenders from the rear windows forward. The front fascia was all new and imposing looking and that's what I love about this 72 Imperial and the back featured vertical teardrop taillights for the first time while the rear side marker lights were in the form of shields with eagles on them. Sales increased to 15,796 with the introduction of this new design compared to 11,569 the previous year. So there we have it guys, that's the redesign of the 1972 Imperial LeBaron. I'm very happy with how this turned out and I just, I really enjoy redesigning and modernizing these 60s and 70s cars because there's so much to do with them and I love the fact that most of them, especially American cars from this era, they use very simple geometries so it's always fun to work with the graphics of these cars. So to emphasize the width here even more in the front, I added these three bars of LEDs that go into one single bar that stretches across the width of the car and then we have this these the two larger LEDs that, that kind of acts as endpoints for the car. The end of the width is marked by these two LEDs at the end of the car. So to make it modern, the problem with this type of era when it comes to 60s and 70s is to work on the lower front part of the car because today we need to have the car lower to the ground and that has a lot to do with aerodynamics and safety. So how do we do that in a 60s car without ruining the, the 60s feel and the vibe of it? Because usually it's a, it sits very high, these cars, off the ground in the front. So I wanted to add some bar, not a bumper, but have some part down there. Very subtle and it doesn't, doesn't really take up a lot of visual 
uh, space but still lowers the car down to the ground while the main graphical elements still sits in the original height of the car. For the wheels I think these black wheels just suit this car perfectly. I changed the width or the, the, the size of the opening in the rear as well to fit these wheels otherwise it's going to look like the wheel is kind of scraping on the body so I wanted to add more space to that to, to fit the rear tires and wheels. And another detail that I wanted to add to this car that is kind of uh, uh, in line with this era is add this chrome trim piece or line that goes all around the car. So you can see it on top of the windshield and then it goes down on the A-pillar there and then it stretches along the hood of the car and then goes down as an end point for the front fenders and then wraps around into the wheel arches as well. So that is one line that is going to be continuous all around the car. It goes in the back as well, that's the idea. Because if you watched my previous videos, you know that I'm a fan of at least one line that you can follow with your eyes across and all around the car. Because that, that kind of ties everything together. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video just as much as I enjoyed making it. Also decided to add a little bit of uh, landscaping behind there. So add a big mountain in the background just to add some drama to the image. I'm the Sketch Monkey. Take care and I will see you in the next video.